as hurricanes become stronger and stronger, is it time to officially have a new category of hurricane strength? Hello, friends. Jim here. Well, in an article published on the online EOS, we've already seen Category 6 hurricanes. Now, scientists want to make it official. And before I proceed any further, I agree. It should be official. We need a Cat 6 designation. Intensifying storms may warrant a new category of hurricane wind speeds. This is hurricane, a photo of Hurricane Patricia, which uh, reached wind speeds above a hypothetical Category 6, making landfall in southwest Mexico in October 2015. And we've had considerably more storms since then that have exceeded uh, certain levels. Five tropical cyclones in the past nine years have hit wind seeds far above the Category 5 threshold, causing thousands of fatalities, billions of dollars of damage. And such hurricane storms are becoming more likely, more frequent, as climate change increases the amount of energy available to storms. I wonder where that energy is from. Oh, right, the ever-increasing ocean heat content. In a new study published in Proceedings at the National Academy of Sciences of the USA, scientists suggest that the growing intensification of tropical cyclones may necessitate adding a sixth category according to the Sapphire Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale. Okay, so let's take a look at that wind scale. And uh, here is the, it's found on the, it's a National Weather Service page. You can always pause the video and, uh, you know, look at this in a little greater detail. But here is the, the wind scale. And, of course, we have categories 1 through 5. So category 1 is 74 to, and this is wind speeds in miles per hour, 74 to 95. Okay, that's, uh, you know, minimal damage. Well, it's bad enough. Category 2 is wind speeds of 96 to 110 miles per hour. Very strong winds. Sometimes some roofing materials may decide to become airborne. Category 3 is from 111 to 129 miles per hour. Now we start getting into more extensive damage. Category 4 is from 130 to 156 miles per hour, which is very, very uh, dangerous. And category five is greater than 156 miles per hour, which is, you know, catastrophic uh, damage, you know, flattening of whole places. Now, one thing if you notice here is that the size of these intervals are not consistent. I mean, here we have basically, you know, if you include the endpoints, 22 miles per hour. You know, a range of 22 miles per hour wind speed. And this one here, it's uh, 15. And then this one here is 19. This one here is 27. So it's not consistent. So, I, uh, so that may want to be addressed. You might want to make these more consistent. But let's just say, you know, we take... You, you make them say 20, 25 miles uh, per hour as your, uh, your, your, your width for each category. We still, we still have seen uh, storms in excess of 170 miles per hour. So if they don't change, adjust these numbers, then I would suggest that we start the category six at around 175, 180 miles per hour. I would suggest we do that. So, um, just my thoughts.
But that, that's where I would, uh, you know, have the Category 6 start, around 175, you know, 180 in that uh, realm. So doing so, going back to the article here, doing so could be one useful tool not only to indicate hurricane risk, but also to convey the increasing dangers of climate change. Very important point there. Ever increasing change, the dangers of climate change, not just the storm itself, but that this is basically this is uh, it's telling us that these storms, these very very powerful storms, are the result of climate change. So it is an acknowledgement of climate change effects. Storms are getting stronger and stronger, so Category 5 underestimates actual risk, said James Cosin, an author on the paper, an atmospheric scientist at University of Wisconsin-Madison. The Saffir-Simpson scale is the most widely recognized hurricane intensity scale, ranking storms from tropical depression at wind speeds less than 38 miles per hour, 61 kilometers, to Category 5, which are wind speeds greater than 157 miles per hour or 253 kilometers per hour. That scale may not capture the risk posed by the most intense storms as the world warms, the authors wrote. They suggest, now they're suggesting that the category six starts at, you know, wind speeds greater than 192. I think that threshold should be lower. That's just my opinion. They use three lines of evidence to support the creation of a sixth category. First, multiple storms have already spilled over to hypothetical category six. Typhoon Haiyan, for example, made landfall in the Philippines in 2013 and had winds that reached 195 miles per hour. Haiyan was the costliest storm ever to hit the country, one of the deadliest, causing more than 6,000 fatalities. 2015, Hurricane Patricia, considered the strongest hurricane ever recorded, brought winds of up to 215 miles per hour. Now, the, the two highest wind speeds ever recorded were, let's just, well, let's just pull this up, 253 miles per hour, Barrow Island, Australia, in uh, April of 1996, 231 miles per hour, Mount Washington, New Hampshire, in 1934. Now, being originally from New Hampshire, uh, went up Mount Washington, hiked up Mount Washington many, many, many times. Uh, the anemometer froze and broke at 231. They suspect that the wind speeds were higher, but the device broke, so couldn't record it. So we got we went with two hundred and thirty-one. Now they list this as uh, number three, two hundred eleven point seven at Paso Real de San Diego in two thousand eight. Uh, so they did not include Hurricane Patricia in here, which is at two fifteen. So that would be nestled in here. And, oh, look at 207 miles per hour, Thule Air Base in the Greenland. Yeehaw. <laughs> Imagine what that wind chill was. Anyway, that gives you an idea of some of these wind speeds. Climate change has likely contributed to the intensification of tropical storms, according to the IPCC. Well, of course, the IPCC would say likely. We know that tropical storms derive their energy from ocean heat, and, well, the oceans have a boatload of heat energy. So, yeah, pretty much, you know, if I was a betting man, I'd bet my bottom dollar on, yeah, the ocean heat driving this stuff, which is climate change, which is humans burning uh, fossil fuels. The authors also analyzed the maximum potential intensity of storms in recent decades, that metric refers to the highest wind speeds that are possible on a given day, given that day's weather conditions. 
They found that in the Gulf of Mexico between 79 and 2019, conditions were conducive to Category 6 hurricanes about 10 days a year. The number of days conducive to Category 6 wind speeds has increased because of climate change that cost them. Lastly, the authors modeled future hurricanes under various climate change scenarios and found that under each possible scenario, the risk of a Category 6 hurricane increased. Over the next decade, there will be Category 6 hurricanes, said Michael uh, Wenner, an author on the paper, climate scientist at uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. Communication of risk shouldn't focus only on a Saffir Simpson scale, according to Michael Brennan, director of NOAA's National Hurricane Center. Most fatalities caused by hurricanes occur not from wind, but from water, which includes storm surges and rain. Well, that would, you know, that would imply uh, water sweeping away people, uh, causing people to drown. Fair point. At the National Hurricane Center, we've tried to steer the focus toward the individual ha hazards, which include storm surge, wind, rainfalls, tornadoes, rip currents, instead of the particular category of the storm. Category 5 on the Safir Simpson scale already captured, captures catastrophic damage from wind, so it's not clear that there would be a need for another category, even if storms were to get stronger. Okay, that's his opinion. That's his assessment. You can um, consider that however you, you care to, you know, make up your own mind. I personally, as I stated at the outset, am in agreement with the authors. I do think a Category 6 um, would be not only necessary, but would be very helpful and really helps delineate between, if you, if you will, the different levels of catastrophic damage. Of course, you know, once the place is flattened, it's flattened. But it, it could imply what he was saying up here about, you know, rainfall, storm surges, rip currents, etc. The question of whether a CAT-6 would be an effective communication tool requires a larger discussion with input from social scientists, psychologists, emergency managers, city planners, Carson said. He said the hopes, he hopes the idea of a hypothetical CAT-6 will spark more discussion of how to warn people about all hurricane-related risks, including wind, storm surge, rainfall, as hurricanes continue to intensify. What we're trying to highlight is not the immediate danger of an impending storm. That kind of thing is already out there. What we're trying to communicate is that the risk of the most intense storm is increasing because of climate change. That is a very important statement. The risk of the most intense storms is increasing because of climate change. Kevin Reed, a climate and atmospheric scientist at Stony Brook University, not involved, said that expanding the Saffir Simpson scale would not only indicate increased risk from individual storms, but highlight the worsening risk of climate change in general. The reality is that hurricanes have changed already. This creates the need to discuss whether the systems that we currently have in place are adequate for the future, and I would add, need adjusting, need modification. So we know that storms are getting stronger, more powerful. And it's not just wind. They're also dumping because they're sucking up all that warm energy to couple with the warming atmosphere as well. Oceans are warming, atmosphere is warm. So it is holding a tremendous amount of moisture. You got strong winds, and you got moisture, and it just dumps. So, I think implementing a Category 6 
is not only recommended, not only a very good idea, but I think a necessity. But that's just me. Anyway, thank you for your time. We'll talk soon.